so. So, let me go back. We spent, what, two or three years tweaking with the tuning pegs till we got the, the, the buttons to be the way you wanted? And yeah, the deal on the tuning keys is that, um, well, first of all, we got the uh, locking tuners to work right, mm -hmm. where um, they didn't weigh a ton and um, you didn't have to have uh, some sort of college degree to figure out how to change the string, and if you forgot at a gig, you were, you were sunk. Anyway, <laughs> He's but what to I found, the old collar yeah, tuners, the old right? collar yeah, tuners. Yeah, that's great. And so anyway, what we found, what I found was we <laughs> need the college degree to use it. Oh, that's funny. I love, I love, I love the tuners that yeah. we that they had come up with. But just one day, I took all the buttons off and held them in my hand, and they weighed about a pound. And uh, I was like. Do we really need a, an extra pound of weight on the headstock? Mm -hmm. So, um, I had seen, you know, I love the look of old Clusons, um, but obviously I wanted to keep the locking tuners. I think it's more effective with the tremolo in terms of tuning. Um, so we came up with this uh, Ivroid plastic, whatever. I don't, I don't know what it is, but faux they weigh bone, nothing. Faux bone, faux bone yeah, Ivroid, yeah, whatever. But they don't, uh, they, they weigh practically nothing. So, and I also think that aesthetically they look really nice, um, which is important to me too, just to have, uh, you know, not just the sonically and playability, but I like, I actually, I do like a guitar that looks cool. And um, I think that it adds to the overall uh, vibe of the guitar. So the same discussion could be had about the fret wire we mm -hmm. finally decided mm -hmm. on. The same discussion can be about leaving the tremolo on alone, but some of the things being changed. Mm -hmm. Huge discussion around this finish that we put on your guitars. Right. Um, to give you an example, we switched over to something called V12 recently, and David was not going to approve having that finish change on his guitars until he got a couple of those guitars with that finish on it, right? So we've just started changing that. Um, if we change the pickups, I will be shot at about two in the morning against the Mexican wall. These He's things tried are... to, yeah, Paul, <laughs> Paul has tried to change the pickups many times and we go it. back. But the pickups are really important to me because um, we spent a year coming up with, with these pickups. And the mm -hmm. way it was, a, it was an interesting process. It was frustrating at times, but ultimately it was really re rewarding because I think we ended up where I wanted to be. And you we started. And, you and Ed Reynolds did that. Yeah, right? Ed Reynolds, uh, guy that, a great guitar repairman, mad scientist, uh, guy in Austin who does mm -hmm. all the work on my guitars. Mm -hmm. um, Not all the work, I do some of it. In Austin, he does all the work <laughs> on my guitars. Um, anyway, I have a fab, uh, an incredible 59 uh, Gibson 335, which has been the benchmark of uh, vintage humbucking tone for me. I had a 59 burst for a while, way back when uh, you could actually buy one. Um, Without having to sell in your house. I sold it about five years too early. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the 335 was really, it just really was uh, a superior instrument to the burst sonically. And there's a tone in those particular PAFs that uh, you hit a note, and the upper harmonic kind of goes off and uh, it's got a lot of nice high end, but it's not brittle. And that's really what I was going for with the pickups. And uh, Ed Reynolds built a test guitar where literally you could slide the pickups in the guitar on rails that he built. And then they had alligator clips to the terminals mm -hmm. uh, right here. Mm -hmm. So in, it took 15 seconds to change out pickups. So you got a true uh, comparison. Apples to in apples. the past, the process of, okay, you put the pickups in, you listen to them. Sounds really good. Let me try these set of, set of pickups. Take the strings later, off, right. take all this out, take this off, resolder, and at which point you don't know for sure what you remember. So um, we did that. We got every boutique pickup um, that we could get our hands on to get another point of reference. We brought the 335 in as we were going along to try to, you know, just capture that quality I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started mailing you pickups. They started mailing pickup. us pickups, and I, I had the. Um, you know, I could say, Paul, that pickup yesterday was pretty cool, but could you send it to me with 43 gauge wire instead of 42? And then while you're at it, send me another one with 43 gauge wire and pot it in beeswax instead of paraffin. And then send me another one with 43 gauge wire and an Alnico 3 bar magnet instead of an Alnico 5. And it, it, this went on for a year. 
until we hit on what I think is the com you know the, the magic combination for this mm -hmm. guitar. Um, and the other thing about the pickups that we did is that um, in the past with the guitars, the McCarty's, the coil tap position to me has been too bright and too, uh, too much of a drop in volume. And so we went through this elaborate process of capacitor networks mm -hmm. and um, everything, trying to get uh, what I was after was a 75%, like a 25% drop. So you're left with 75% of the initial volume. Um, I'm not sure where we ended up, but I know that the, the coil tap positions on this guitar are imminently more usable than any other guitar I've played. Yeah, Wynn finally came up with the solution and sent it to you and you said, that's it, I'm done. I yeah, in fact, I can show you real quick. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in the bridge pickup, that, that's full humbucking, not playing too, too hard. If I go to the coil tap, so I can really get a you know a really convincing telly kind of tone. And then the one that really blows my mind is the neck pickup yeah. where I can So that's single coil. Yeah. It's not a drastic change, but it's just enough no. to where if I want a, a strat neck sound, it's there. Yeah. So it's not actually it's the way it's wired. It's not completely single coil. It cuts out about two thirds of the other coil. It's very interesting the way it's wired, but it works.